Today I fucked up by turning my daughter into a wannabe superhero with an incredibly strong moral compass. To preface this story, I am going to start with my opinion I do not believe what my daughter did was wrong. In fact, I am incredibly proud of her, even though she may have been overzealous, her reasoning are very much in the right place. We have discussed at length what she should do if ever in this situation again, which I hope she is not. So, let's start in the beginning, as it is the best place to start. TLR at the bottom, as per tradition also, just letting you all know this is a new account and my first time posting on Reddit long time lurker if I did anything wrong, sorry. I, 35F, have a wonderful 9 year old daughter. She is smart, and outgoing and just incredibly strong. Two years ago, me and my ex-husband divorced. He fell out of love with me and fell into the bed of a 21 year old, it's a story as old as time, but it doesn't hurt any less. About 6 months ago, I was mugged on my way home from work. I was messed up, I was covered in bruises and in a lot of distress mentally. My ex is not a present father, he moved to France for work about 3 months after the divorce was finalized, so he wasn't able to help look after my daughter while I was healing, she spent some time with my mom. But she saw me at my worst. I have a lot of guilt about that. She began getting very anxious to leave the house, she didn't want to leave my side. She was worried mummy would get hurt again. A friend of mine's son was being bullied at school a while back. She enrolled him in some karate classes, not for fighting, more to build his confidence and it really worked for him. She suggested that maybe putting my girl in some classes may help her feel more secure. I suggested this to her and she wanted to do them, but wanted me to do them too. Which to be honest, was probably a very good decision I spoke to the sensei and asked if I could sit in on the beginner's class with her etc. I explained the situation, and he agreed. We both loved it, she picked it up so quick and she loved the play activities with the other children. A few months after we started, she was leaps and bounds ahead of me and ready to play with a more advanced level of students. The bonus of that is the night the advanced kids met, was after the beginner adults met. So we changed out nights, I started training with adults, she carried on with the advanced kids. She has picked it up so quickly. Her confidence in her ability is sky high too. A few times when we have been out she has seen something that has worried her, like someone walking towards us and she will grip my hand a little tighter and move herself in front of me. I keep reminding her I am the adult, we are safe and this is not her burden. For anyone wondering, mental health care is hard in the UK. We are not very well supported, she has spoken to a counsellor that works with her school, she hasn't said that she needs to see anyone more, but we are on a waiting list. Therapy never hurt anyone, so why not look into it? But I can't afford to go private and the NHS just takes a very, very long time. Fast forward a few weeks, last week was her first week back in school after the summer holidays. There was a new student in her class, we will call them Alex. Alex and my daughter have become the fastest of friends. She couldn't stop speaking about him on Monday when she came home from school. Alex likes this food. Alex likes this TV show, Alex said, Alex did, etc. It's adorable, but my kid has took it upon herself to be Alex's bodyguard. Alex is a very expressive child. They wear a school uniform, but Alex likes to wear nail polish. He has long hair which they wear pulled back or in a play. He has bows on his shoes. He just wears what he wants and has the confidence to rock a potato sack if that is what he feels comfy in. His parents are amazing too. They have been so welcoming of my daughter and me too. We have had drinks this weekend after the incident and they are wonderful people. So, the incident. Last Thursday, Alex changed his black nail polish for a deep plum purple color. Some of the boys in their class decided to show how bad their upbringing was and told Alex, you're a boy, you shouldn't wear girly things, because that's what makes you gay, both Alex and my daughter told them to shut up, and go bother someone else. This is when one of the bullies says, if you're wearing girly stuff tomorrow, I'm going to kill you. Yeah, you read that right. So my girl, being a defiant little menace decided she wasn't going to tell an adult. We have had a very long conversation about this, don't worry, and she was going to handle this herself. Alex also decided he was going to handle things his own way too. Friday morning rolls round, the plum nail polish has gone and in its place is the most beautiful and vivid pink you have ever seen and his hair was in an elaborate viking style play. It must have took a while. It was stunning. Well, apparently, this was like waving a red flag in front of the bully boy's face. He marched up to Alex and told him he was going to kill him at lunchtime. My girl told him he could try but she wouldn't let him. Lunch came around and they were outside for playtime. True to his word the bully started to run at Alex and my girl took him out. Now, bear in mind up until this morning I only really had the details from two nine-year-olds. So when Alex told me she flew, I was fairly hesitant to believe him. He told me she punched the boy in the face, made him bleed, 
which made him cry and now he is petrified of her. I got a phone call from the school after lunch asking me to come and pick her up because she has been suspended for fighting. Alex was refusing to leave her and saying that if she was suspended so was he because it wasn't her fault. Alex's dad arrived at the same time I did to collect out kids. The headmaster told us that it was pending an investigation and we would be called in for a meeting on Monday. Obviously when my daughter told me the full story I was livid, I asked why she didn't tell a teacher, she said she wanted to handle it so he knew he couldn't threaten people, but she told a teacher after the fact and they didn't believe her. So I am even more livid at this point. I contact Alex's parents and discuss, have a drink, bond over our kids etc. So, this morning, 8am rolls around, I am sat in front of the headmaster, he begins to bemoan about how my daughter has brought violence to the school, how she has broken a boy's nose and I shit you not, how this is very unladylike behavior. I was honestly aghast, we are a zero tolerance school when it comes to violence. My daughter had been stood on top of a little wall at the edge of the playground, essentially keeping watch. She saw the kid running towards Alex, when he got close enough she launched herself off the wall, straight at the boy. She essentially did a flying punch, landed on him and then proceeded to lock her arms in his and keep him in place until the playtime supervisor arrived. I asked him how his investigation has gone, and he said he has spoken to the boy and because this was a completely unprovoked attack, my daughter would be suspended further for the week, with a behavior management program and she would be expected to apologize to the boy she hit. I'll be honest guys, I have never been the confrontational type, I think it skipped a generation. But in that moment I summoned the spirit of my little girl. I asked him how he could have completed the investigation, if neither my daughter, Alex or the parents had been involved. How he had come to such a conclusion without any facts or evidence. He just stumbled over his words. I asked him, so is this what happens when students call someone names and threaten to kill them? You punish the person protecting them, he was silent and said it was the first time he has heard of this and that he had been told it was unprovoked and my daughter was the only aggressor. I asked him who told him this and he was silent. I then called him a liar and that he was informed of the situation because both my daughter and Alex told him. I left the meeting telling him that my daughter was not suspended, however she would not be in school until the situation had been dealt with to a satisfactory conclusion. I have emailed her teacher and asked her to forward any work she would have been doing in class and she will do it from home. I have her with me in the office today, and my boss is letting me work from home for the rest of the week. I know I am responsible in part for what she has done, I know violence isn't the answer. I am very proud of her for standing up for what she believes in, but we have had a talk about how she needs to always tell me things like this. I am furious with her school. I called Alex's mom when I got out of the meeting. Alex isn't in today because they are having a meeting this afternoon about the bullying Alex has been subjected to. She has supported my actions though and said that if she doesn't get the right response today she will be pulling Alex too. There aren't many primary schools locally that will have space left for them if the best decision is to pull them out of this school permanently, but I am not happy with how the headmaster has dealt with the situation to be honest. Thanks for listening, I just needed to word vomit into a void. I have fucked my daughter up royally, I know. Too long did not read. My daughter used her karate training to defend her friend from a boy who said he was going to kill him. She broke his nose, but the headmaster is only punishing her. I am livid. Not so sure it's a foo. You are raising a daughter that will put up with zero bullshit with the self-confidence to match. You are doing great. Parenting is so hard and you have had some hard knocks and are still fighting. You did not foo you are doing great. Could your daughter have handled this better by telling an adult sooner? Yes, but did she handle it well yes. She stood by her friend and stood up to a bully. Frankly most adults would probably handle it worse if they were actually in her shoes. It's a great learning opportunity, but just because she could have handled it better does not mean what she did was bad. Also based on how the school has responded telling them sooner would only have been CYA and there would most likely still have been a fight. You are doing great. I'd be proud of your daughter too although, yes, she should have told you sooner and given the adults a chance to sort things out before it got to wherever it got to. Side note. Alex isn't getting enough credit for sticking up for your daughter in the comments. He sounds like a bit of a lad, too. Good for him. What looks like a bad moment of your youth can be tempered with age to form a strong adult. One day she will see it exactly how you do, but she'll still be proud for protecting her friend. Your daughter is my hero. I needed an advocate like her when I was being bullied. Obviously, she can't go around attempting to fix problems this way. But oh my goodness, what a heart. I hope that you explain to her that hitting other people has to be the last resort, amongst other reasons because not everyone will agree that self-defense is necessary. But I also hope you will explain to her that looking after someone who is weaker or who is a victim in some way is the right thing to do.
I'm getting weepy thinking about all the times I would have liked to have clapped back at the people who abused me as an elementary school student. Tell your daughter, with great power comes great responsibility. She did right by her friend, but she should have brought you into the situation sooner. Today I fucked up by not checking the mailbox before my dad. Both my father and his wife like online shopping. Since they have a fairly trusting relationship, and my dad likes opening packages, he frequently opens packages regardless of whether the name on the box is his or his wife's. The issue that I overlooked is that because of this dynamic, my dad apparently never actually checks who the mail is addressed to before opening it. I didn't want dad or his wife to even know that I got a package delivered, and I thought they wouldn't, since the postal service sends you a notification on the day that your package is set to arrive with an expected delivery timeframe. My plan was to watch the mailbox like a hawk during said time frame and swoop the package out of the mailbox before anyone else even checks it. It was my mistake that on the day it was delivered I forget to check my email and subsequently miss the notification. My dad knocked on my bedroom door, he cracked it open just a slither and handed me a clearly already opened package that he had poorly attempted to tape back shut. He apologizes and said he thought it was bike parts that he was waiting for or something that his wife had ordered. What was actually in the box was a strap-on and 100 mallow bottle of lube. I'm now convinced my dad thinks I'm a lesbian, or that next time I introduced him to a boyfriend, he will look him in the eyes and silently assume he likes taking it up the butt. FML. Too long did not read. My dad opened a package addressed to me that had a strap-on inside. He thought it was bike parts he ordered. I'm now convinced my dad thinks I'm a lesbian, or that next time I introduced him to a boyfriend, he will look him in the eyes and silently assume he likes taking it up the butt. Is he wrong? When I still lived at home with my parents and brothers, my older brother would open anything and everything that was delivered to the house like he couldn't help himself. I ordered the cheapest dildo off Amazon I could find and he opened it, never mentioned it to anyone, then never opened any parcels not addressed to him ever again. In the future, dad will most likely be more careful opening packages. If you really want to mess with him, order a bottle of bike chain lube and then tell him you have lube in the mail. I was going to recommend ordering a t-shirt that says, my dad opens all my packages and all I got was this lousy t-shirt, but you found an even better solution. Sounds like dad needs to keep his prying eyes and hands to his damn self. If he actually looks at a name he would know that it was your delivery and not his stupid bike parts. I would order more and more outrageous shit just to hammer a point home to quit opening my packages if I were you. He was shocked then realized that his wife didn't order it. I would like to see his reaction. Today I fucked up by leaving my Prussian shake in the car over the weekend. I have a Prochen shake every day on my one hour commute to work. I make it with milk in one of those shaker bottles. On the day in question, Friday, I put the shake in my car then realized I don't have my wallet. I then decided that the weather was nice and I was going to ride my motorcycle to work. Fast forward to today, I get in the car and see the bottle in the cup holder. Knowing what happens to Prochen shakes after even a few hours, I elect to just throw it away. I'm guessing that there is some sort of bacteria living in it that causes gas to build up and the pressure in the bottle was already critical. When I picked it up, the lid flew open and a stream of foul, chunky Prussian bacteria slurry issued forth. It got in my hair, my beard, the dashboard, the upholstery. The smell could gag a cockroach and a little got in my mouth. I chopped off my beard and took a shower, but I don't know what to do about the car. The drive to work today was torture. Too long did not read. I spewed a disgusting mixture of milk, Prussian powder, and bacteria all around the inside of my car. You have two options. 1. Spend $250 on a full detail. 2. Burn the car down and commit insurance fraud to buy a new one. Watch out, those will be healthy, well-nourished bacteria. They'll be the size of footballs with big muscles. Dang that sucks. Sorry you're having to go through that. Rip the beard. A few years ago my wife threw up while driving and it got everywhere. This is how I learned that it's not all that challenging to remove car paneling and get deep with the shop vac. I unfortunately didn't learn this until after I paid someone to detail the car and it still stunk to high heaven. Oh man that would be so foul. I honestly would take the car to a detailer and have it professionally cleaned. You need to be super careful that there's no mold spores. If you get mold spores on the interior it will likely spread and lead to it being totaled because it's not safe to drive a car like that. Get your car detailed ASAP. Today I fucked up by skinning myself. So today I fucked up by skinning myself. I was in the shower and realized I was out of shaving cream. So I used body wash. All was going well and then I thought I just nicked myself near my ankle. I just kinda got annoyed but the amount of blood in the tub should have told me otherwise. I got out and noticed blood just pooling at my foot. I grabbed a paper towel and gently wiped away the blood to see how bad it actually was. 
Turns out I managed to skin myself. There was a 4 inch by 1, 4 and 3 8 spot of skin just missing. I had to take a quick moment to not get sick from how bad it was. I got it all cleaned off and kept applying paper towels for a solid 10 minutes before the bleeding was mostly stopped. I bandaged it up with gauze. After I finally got dressed I had to get the Swiffer out to mop all the mess up off the floor and give the shower, tub a quick bleach clean. And while cleaning the tub I found my missing skin. I initially thought it was just a piece of paper from like a shampoo bottle but it was not. It hurts so bad but I will never use body wash again. Too long did not read. I skinned myself shaving and now have a 4 inch long piece of skin missing by my ankle and it still hurts. How are y'all shaving? I rarely cut myself and I just use the bare razor on my skin. Use conditioner. So much closer to shaving cream than body wash. But rip to the skin lead. I think you should throw out that razor. Even with body wash this isn't normal. Years ago I did almost the exact same thing. And for years I would reskin it if I wasn't paying attention. So be careful shaving there for the foreseeable future. You are lucky you were shaving your ankle. No, fuck that's crappy. Keep a close eye on it, be very careful about infections. Keep it clean, and maybe consider dropping by a clinic to make sure it didn't go too deep if you can. Make sure it will heal alright, it's a large area and that may cause issues. Also see if anything can be done about scarring. Probably not much, but it might not hurt to ask.